Hello everyone, hope you are doing well and with the recent update on the new Dragon Ball Super movie slated for release in 2022, I thought it might be interesting to speculate on what Shintani's approach might be, considering his style has changed quite a bit over the past few years, slowly gravitating to a more angular look. Even between the early promo art and the later promo art he did for Broly, there was a clear change. And the question may also arise as to, will Shintani even be the character designer? And I'm confident he will considering Shintani was picked by Toriyama himself and with already making a clear effort to take the series visuals in a new direction, I'm more than confident Tadayoshi Yamamoro won't suddenly reprise the role, especially since he is tied down on Dragon Ball Super Heroes. Although I do wonder in regards to Yamamoto if he will be completely absent from this film like last time, maybe we might get to see some key animation from him but I guess time will tell. But before we get to that though, the featured artist for this video is Unbroken. He has done some good work and has done a series of images reimagining characters from Super and GT's art style which I personally find quite interesting so go give him a follow. I'll leave the link to his account in the description and use this hashtag and tag me on Insta for your chance to feature in a video. But let's get back to the main topic. So we get our first unfiltered look at Shintani style surprisingly in 2017 with an intro for a Dragon Ball Z 4D short film that was part of a ride. His approach to the faces, anatomy and clothing on characters was a rounded and simplistic approach which wasn't all too different to the character sheets for DBS Broly, with exception to the noses being drawn larger at this time, and also being drawn more straight down with little curvature in the bridge of the nose. The feature placement though was a little off in some shots, as it seems he was still getting used to Dragon Ball's designs. By the time we get to his work in DBS Broly, it seems most of these issues were ironed out, with exception to some small ones like with features like the nose again for some of the character sheets, but nothing overly glaring from a general standpoint. However, with some of the later promo art, you can start to see a more angular look to the faces and various features. And for context, the first poster we got from Chintani was actually drawn around in February of 2017, so it had been about a year or so in between when these posters on screen were drawn. And this pretty much became standard when moving on to early 2019, when we got a series of illustrations from Shintani for the special limited edition box release of DBS Broly, as well as some more excellent art for Goku Day. The jawline and the side of the heads are very angular here, necks are a little larger, the lines for the clothing feel somewhat more sharper, the shoes are drawn with more of a triangular shape rather than the more rounded look they took on prior, Anatomy additionally is somewhat more defined and detailed, all in all though this approaches even further in line with the manga. But for a while there we didn't really get any new Dragon Ball art from Shintani until early this year with some new card art. And stylistically there are even more changes again with surprisingly a mix of Tadayoshi Yamamoru's older style. Particularly with the shading, the shapes are quite similar in style to Yamamoro's. He also adds highlights on the skin, another trait from Yamamoro's older work with again the style of the shapes being more in line with how Yamamoro would usually draw them in the early 90s rather than the late 90s and 2000s onwards. He also uses three tones which we have seen before like with the promo art I showed before, so it's not an entirely new approach. But it's still interesting that he didn't go with two tones. Additionally, the way he has drawn like the bicep and deltoid has a very similar shape to Yamamoro's, leaning a little more to that blockier look. This influence and change in style though, even extends to the clothing. The shoulder pads are drawn with more creases, aren't as rounded and have highlights much like the older designs. And the pants, like many other elements, they also carry a very similar shape, especially when compared to how they were drawn in the prior character sheets. The only thing that hasn't really changed is how he has drawn the facial features and hair, with exception to the highlights and some slight differences around the jawline here, but very much in line with what we've seen in the past. Now this could have just been a once-off approach, sort of a tribute perhaps, but back in an interview conducted in 2018, he shed some light on his process during the production of DBS Broly and noted that since he wasn't accustomed to drawing Dragon Ball yet, he also referenced the flow and expressions of Yamamoro's designs, as well as going through all of the old movies. Now he still mentions that he preferred Maeda's designs and that he tried to emulate some of Maeda's style in his own character sheets, but regardless, taking notes from Yamamoro's old the work isn't entirely new as some may think, although he's never invoked it as much as he has here. 
He also expressed that he found it somewhat difficult choosing between the art style in the cell and freezer arc. So it makes me wonder that perhaps over time, whether he's decided to lean a little more into the look seen in later arcs and might have revisited some of Dragon Ball's films again or rewatched some of the original series and has now taken more of a liking to Yamamoto's style. Who knows exactly? Now, the question may arise as to will this be his approach? Will highlights on the skin and whatnot make a return? And personally, I don't think so, but at the same time, I don't believe the designs will be as rounded and soft as the sheets from DBS Broly this time around. And instead, my guess is that it would somewhat be closer to those illustrations he did for Goku Day in 2019, with again, a slightly more angular touch to characters' faces and clothing, not being as loose like I mentioned before. Characters may also be a little more muscular as well, although I'm confident one element of his work that isn't going anywhere is his simple two-tone shading. And honestly, I would be personally very happy with this look. I definitely like the new direction Shintani took for the most part, but I do remember wishing that characters like Goku looked a little older and more mature in the face, like the manga, and just having a more angular look in general. And surprisingly, changing his neck size actually had an impact on how old he looked. And once again, that's something that's changed in his newer work as well, which I think is for the better. And if for whatever reason the character sheets did suddenly go to that more detailed look like the card art, I wouldn't really mind either. I quite liked how he took some elements from Yamamoto's older work in the Cell and Boo arc, and I still have a soft spot for that more detailed look to the character art from that era. It's partly why I love Takahashi's portion he supervised in DBS Broly and Shikashi Kubota's work, even if it did vary from the character sheets, more so Takahashi though. And without getting too off topic though, Chikashi Kubata is severely underrated in how well he draws Dragon Ball characters and can replicate Toriyama's style. He just did some new art for Goku Day and it was excellent. It would be really cool to see him work on Dragon Ball again, and I know it won't happen, but if he ever did take the role of character designer, I wouldn't really mind either. He's done some excellent work in the past, like with the character sheets for One Punch Man, so I'm sure he would do great in that role, but back to Shintani. Either way, if he does take a more simpler approach or a more detailed one, I'm still quite eager, assuming that this isn't an entirely CGI film, like speculated by some in the community by Toriyama's comments about unexplored territory visually, although Herms' translation on Twitter seemed to kind of set those fears aside just a bit. Um, who knows what Toriyama means by refreshed visuals? I'm just hoping it's all hype, but it's quite early though, of course. Who knows exactly what will happen? But with that though, I'll end the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I was originally going to make a video on this topic of how Shintani's style has changed and speculate his approach perhaps for the main Super TV series earlier this year, but I never bothered, I think, because it seems so far off in the future. However, with this movie that I completely forgot about was brought up back in 2019, it seemed like the right time to do it. But with that again, though, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.